Hey guys, George at Soundtracks here. This week we're going to talk about the exhaust control on the Tsunami 2 set up in CB114 and what that means. So let's get started. Now over the period of time that I've been doing the customer support, I've been getting a lot of questions regarding how CB114 is set up for things such as the auto start, uh, we've discussed videos like that in the past, also how it adjusts to notching, and also dynamic brake effect. So we're going to break down CB114 for you so that that way you have a better idea of what this CB does and how to set it up. So first off, the first thing we need to look at is the bit structure. Now you'll notice this bit structure here in the diagram shown. You can see that the first several bits are used for the notching rate. Then you'll see what's called the interlock, the auto start, and then the dynamic brake one and two. And we're gonna get into each of those features and what they mean. So first off, when we're doing a CV value such as CV114, we have to look at each of these different effects and determine how to, how to come up with the final value. So for starters, we're gonna look at CV114. The first part of this is the auto notching. Now you can set the auto notching rate to a value of zero, which means you will manually have to increase the diesel engine up, arp, and down by, by using the function keys. Most people like to use the auto notching, and so you want to look at a range of 1 through 15, and what that means is a, a value of 1 through 15 corresponds to the number of speed steps in 128 speed step mode that the diesel engine will take to notch up to the next notch. Now, as we've discussed in previous videos in regards to our dynamic digital exhaust, when you're using the DDE feature, you want to set that to a value of 15. And the reason is, is it spreads out that notching a little bit more so that when the DDE processor is making those sounds notch up and down, you get a smoother, more realistic effect between the notches as opposed to a little bit more of an up and down sequence. And that's part of the calibration process, so be sure to check out the video on the dynamic exhaust. Now the next part is what's called the interlock bit, and this one is really kind of a mystery in a lot of ways. The interlock bit, what this does, this will prevent you from shutting down your prime mover when the locomotive is moving. Conversely, it will also prevent you from moving the locomotive if the prime mover sound is not on. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to take this locomotive here. This is an Athern SD80, one of the brand new models that we've just really gotten. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move forward at speed step one. But now what I'm going to do is in my throttle, I'm going to press the RPM minus. You'll hear it drop to idle. But then if I go one more, you'll hear it shut down. Now this would be a very, a very big faux pas because one of the things we have in our decoder is the auto manual notching, which means you can manually override the auto notching. But as you can see, you can still be moving and accidentally shut down the prime mover. Okay, now once we've enabled our interlock bit, now when I start moving my locomotive at speed step one, you hear the diesel engine notch up. Now I'm going to go ahead and decrease the diesel engine RPM. Now you hear it go to an idle. So now we're going to do it again. And you can see that as long as my locomotive is moving, it does not shut down. Once we bring the locomotive to a stop, now we press the decrease RPMs, and now you can see that it shuts down. That's what the interlock bit does. Now the next part of CV114 is what's called the auto start. And the auto start, as its name implies, allows the diesel engine to automatically start up as soon as track power is applied. You can imagine in a layout that's fairly large with a lot of diesel engines, if all of them started up together at the same time, it could become very overpowering. But the auto start bit is what does this. And the reason it's enabled from the factory is because when you put that decoder on there after a brand new decoder installation, you want to make sure that that decoder is working. So you have that nice warm fuzzy when you hear that sound fire up and you know everything's in good shape. So as the so now when we tip our locomotive over and we set the back down on the track, 
you can hear that diesel engine starting. So the low, low pressure alarm bell starts off. Now you hear the diesel engine fire up. But now when I disable the auto start bit, so now in this case, I'm gonna take CB114 and I'm gonna program this to disable the auto start bit. So now when I tip the locomotive over and set it back down, you can see that the locomotive now is not starting. It will not start up until I start, I give it the sequence here. So we're gonna go ahead and fire it up. You can hear that it fires up. Now the last part of CB114 addresses how the prime mover changes based on when the dynamic brakes are used. So when you're running your locomotive, if you're using the brakes, typically you're not ramping your diesel engine up. So there's a few different ways that the dynamic brakes uh, application will affect how the prime mover sound plays. So the first one is no change, which as our aftermarket decoders come, where the dynamic brakes do not affect the sound of the prime mover. But typically when you're riding the brakes, you're not also pushing the gas. Think of it in your car. So EMD in most of their locomotives and many other brands of locomotives would drop the prime mover to idle. So you can enable the prime mover to drop to idle when you enable the dynamic brakes. Now there are some railroads, the Missouri Pacific included, the railroad I model, on the ones that they had that were dynamic brake equipped, the Southern Pacific is another railroad that had it, but their prime movers on their dynamic brake equipped locomotives would drop to notch four. The reason for that was to make sure that there was enough electrical energy generated by the main generator to make sure that the traction motor blowers were running to keep those traction motors cool because they're basically turning into the brakes so you want to keep fans on them so they don't overheat. So in some cases you'll see that the prime mover dr drops to notch four. Now the last one in some of the early Alco models the fans on the radiator fan were mechanically driven off of the crankshaft and so your prime mover would then notch up to notch eight and the reason was to turn that fan the absolute fastest to make sure you had the maximum airflow across the resistor grids. So you can have your prime mover drop or run up to notch eight. Now in our decoder, all three of those options are available as well as the no effect at all. And all of this is hidden in CB114. So I would encourage you to check out our user's guide, see the lowdown and how to calculate that final CB value in CB114 so that you get your diesel engines running the way you'd like on your railroad.